This is a video about uh, some repair I'm doing to my 1999 Tahoe. Uh, this is a 5.7 liter Vortec V8. Uh, basic small block Chevy really. Uh, these things are like 255 horsepower and uh, 330 pounds feet of torque. And uh, I've had one problem with this vehicle. It's been a really a great truck. It's got 200,000 miles on it. Uh, but one of the issues I've had is uh, intake manifold uh, water leaking and um, I just took the intake off today and was planning on replacing the uh, intake gasket uh, now I replaced this gasket at like 60,000 miles and uh, now at 200,000 miles uh, developed another leak at the intake gasket and I blame it on the uh, Dex Cool extended life um, coolant that they that they use and uh, this one thing I can complain about in this truck is is the water leaks I've had uh, I, it leaks everywhere, everywhere, and then the, one of the worst places to leak is the intake gasket because on this vehicle it's very hard to replace that gasket. You got to remove a lot of things. As you can see, uh, I've got my compressor here suspended up out of the way. Uh, on the Vortec, there's uh, there's just a lot of things you have to move out of the way. Uh, you've got this uh, EGR pipe here that has to come off. You've got to tie up all of your wires. Um, your fuel that comes in the top of the manifold, you have to pull it up out of the way. And uh, after I pulled this thing off, I was looking at, uh, at, the, at the condition of the gasket. And uh, I was just looking at this right here. And this is an intake port. But look how that, uh, that gasket, the, the plastic part of the gasket is actually broken. And it's actually pulled in uh, the rubber O-ring somewhat. Now, I was getting this, just a slight rough running out of this not not really too bad but I just wonder if maybe that was part of it you can see here where this one kind of bulged into the port as well uh, you can see what I'm talking about right here where these are like a plastic gasket with a impregnated rubber o-ring around each port and around the entire uh, gasket including the water crossover passages uh, I was leaking really bad back in here you can see how bad that is. Uh, it just it, it seems like that Dex Cool um, coolant just eats up the gaskets. Uh, so the last time I replaced this, like I said, the truck had 60,000 on it, and I put just a little RTV around those water ports, thinking maybe that might help it, and I think it did uh, because it's 200,000 miles now, and it started leaking a while back, and I put some. Uh, stop leak in it and it seemed to work for a little bit but then it got so bad I just had to replace it now the good news is uh, on these V8's um, when you do have a water leak like that they don't tend to go into the valley and into the uh, oil pan where you mix your oil and water they tend to just run out on the ends so uh, you just get a puddle of, any, of coolant on the ground and um, you know nothing into the oil from what I understand, though, uh, on some of the V6s, when you develop this leak, uh, a lot of times the water goes into the engine, and then you get the oil mixing with the water, and, and I call it chocolate milk. Uh, now, this engine's in pretty good shape for 200,000 miles. It uses no oil. Um, I change the oil every 3,000 miles. I use Penn's oil, 10W30 in it, and uh, I see just a little bit of sludge down around the lifters, but not very much at all. Uh, now this engine does have a roller cam in it from the factory. And you can see that spider they call it uh, that, that keeps all the roller uh, lifters in, straight in line. Uh, and it also has the guided, uh, the guided rockers on it. That was a, th a thing that came out with the, uh, the Vortec engine. Uh, is it, something else is a little unusual about this. It's basically the same thing as, a, as the old Chevy small block years ago. Um, but there is one difference in it, and uh, these blocks are not drilled for a internal water bypass, so they actually added this bypass hose on there, which I hate. Um, and small block Chevys had never had those until 96, when, uh, when this Vortec engine came out. Uh, and of course the Vortec engine has the Vortec heads on it, which are really great. And this thing really runs well, it runs very good. Um, I do see a little bit of... Uh, build up in the intake ports um, but they're not too bad and like I said the thing really runs great 
uh, lots of low end torque. Uh, these engines are really, really nice. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you the uh, intake manifold and some of the other parts to the Vortec. Um, and it should have this thing up and running shortly. I've been putting it off for a while and it kept leaking. Uh, one thing that's a little unusual about the Vortec is the uh, the distributor cap. It's wired internally so that all of your uh, passenger side and driver side plug wires come out on the right side. Uh, it's a real shallow little cap. I'm going to be replacing this one. It's got a little bit of what looks to be like corrosion around the around the contacts, but uh, it was it was running fine really. Uh, like I said, it, it had like a it seemed like it just it wasn't idling just smooth as it could be. Even after seeing that intake gasket, I kind of wonder if maybe that was part of the problem. And then, uh, of course, one of the things you have to take off is the the coil. This has the coil and the uh, ignition module uh, made together, and that just bolts down to the upper intake. You take that off. And of course, that's the air filter. They got a great big air filter on them. Uh, the distributor is like a plastic assembly. Which I'm not too crazy about, but this one here has been 200,000 miles and hasn't given me any trouble. Uh, they will have the melanized gear for the steel cam, more than likely. Uh, most steel cams will have a melanized gear or a bronze gear. They, uh, the regular gear on a distributor won't get along with the steel crank uh, cam. Uh, as far as the distributor goes, basically it's just a, um, a rotor and it does have a cam sensor in it. It doesn't have any uh, trigger mechanism. This is a crank triggered engine and uh, it does have a cam uh, sensor in there and that's to uh, sequence the injectors and to also allow for the uh, misfire detector to work. And uh, one thing you have to do when you pull these distributors out, you'll see a, I have a witness mark right here that lines up with a, a mark that I put on the intake manifold. These have to be put back into the same position that they were in as well as the rotor also has to be in the same position that it came out. Um, that way you send the spark to the right cylinder and the computer takes care of the timing. There's, there's no timing adjustment with this, um, but the distributor does have to be put back in the same uh, position as it came out. Um, the uh, Vortec engines on the V6s I believe have a um, a notch or a keyway where the distributor can only go in one way. The V8s, you can stick this in and turn it anywhere, but it does need to be put back exactly the way it came out. Now you have the uh, the resonator here. This bolts down on top of the uh, throttle body. It's got a pretty good size pipe that leads into the throttle body. And then this, uh, this box here is basically a resonator has Vortec written on it. It's kind of cool. Uh, the, what, then what connects here is basically intake pipe with your air meter and this is a mass air engine. It's also got a, a device here to let you know when your air filter is starting to stop up. That'll pull down and let you know that the, the filter is starting to get clogged up. But the filters last forever. The, the air goes in through the uh, fender and by the time it gets to the air filter pretty much all the trash and leaves and other debris is uh, no longer an issue. Uh, now we're going to go over and take a look at the intake manifold itself. And uh, I haven't cleaned any of this stuff up yet, but uh, this is the Vortec intake manifold. It does have the Vortec um, uh, bolt pattern. Uh, there's only eight, uh, eight bolts that hold this down as opposed to the old Chevys that had the uh, 12 bolts that held it down. Um, the uh, throttle butterfly sits up here, the, the um, uh, throttle body, pretty good size throttle body. And uh, another kind of interesting thing about this is uh, it has a, um, uh, a uh, one area where all the injectors, all eight injectors, in fact you can see the connectors here for each one. All eight, all eight connectors, all eight, excuse me, all eight injectors sit inside this little area here. And uh, the fuel comes to this uh, via a tube, and then the return also leaves these two ports here. So it basically sends fuel to all eight of these. And then in a normal setup, there's a 
tube that goes to each runner underneath the upper intake here that goes to each runner on the lower intake and um, at the end of that tube is a poppet nozzle. Uh, I took this apart and, uh, and changed mine to what they call an MFI where uh, this area up here is just basically a manifold for all eight of those tubes and at the end of the tube is the injector and then the wires come from the injector back up to these. It's supposed to be a performance uh, enhancement and I think it did make it a little bit of a difference but uh, I went ahead and did that because I heard that the poppet nozzles sometimes give trouble but uh, you know I didn't have any trouble before I just thought maybe I could increase performance a little bit so I did it and it did seem to make a difference. Uh, the intake manifold is a little bit unusual and you know, it has an upper plastic um, upper part of it. Um, it's got the uh, map sensor built into it. Uh, this is the tube here that goes over to the power brakes. It's got a EGR and uh, this is an electric EGR instead of the old vacuum type. And uh, I think I showed you on the engine the tube actually comes into this port right here from the exhaust manifold so it actually brings in exhaust from the exhaust manifold into the intake here through this valve and then bleeds it over into the uh, air intake. Uh, the Vortec heads, heads have no exhaust crossover so you have to have, if you're going to have an EGR, you have to have an external tube plumbed from the exhaust system up to uh, up to this port here. So it's, it's a little bit different than your normal small block Chevy. Uh, now the intake, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, valve covers, they had to pull the valve covers off to get that intake manifold off and this is basically what they call the center bolt valve covers. It has the the bolts in the center of the cover that holds them down to the engine and uh, it has trusses in here so it spreads out the load evenly. It totally cured all the oil leak problems uh, along with the Vortec heads also have a ra raised rocker rail which uh, brings the oil level down below where this gasket seats, which is the old the old engines, the, the the oil always set against these gaskets, and oh, you always had a leak, and uh, these center bolt covers with the raised rocker rail on the heads really cured that problem. So I just wanted to share that with you and uh, show you a little bit about what I was doing to my Vortec 5.7. Uh, like I said, it's got 200,000 miles on it, runs great, uses no oil. Um, well worth fixing it just uh, you know you're looking at a day or two job here to get all this done because of the um, you know just the the work involved and in, in getting that getting that intake off of there it's just so many things that that's in the way and uh, so hope you enjoyed this video